Hi everyone, my name is Della Phillips. I'm an artist, among other things, as well as I'm known as the Bicycle Lady. How you doing today? I'm doing great. I hope you're doing great too. So, today you see an array of items on my desk. And I use that to make this. This is, basically you can use it as a drawing board. Take down your paper. And if you have several of them, that way you can have several projects going on at the same time. Actually, I really made this so I could stretch watercolor paper since I'm starting to get back into watercolor with my fill box and so forth. And I wanted a board that I could tape watercolor paper down to or stretch it out by stapling it down. And normally I prefer gator board. But gator board in my area is not that easy to get anymore. It used to be easier, but a couple businesses, such as the Blueprint Company and so forth, went out of business. So it's not that readily available. Plus, it has become quite expensive when you, if you go online to buy it as well. So, I've made board before where I went into the... Uh, 99 cent store, dollar store, whatever, and got those uh, cheap quarter inch foam board and then glued them together and then sandwiched uh, additional, maybe old mat board onto it. And that worked fine too. I didn't have that and I didn't want to go out and buy anything. So how I made this is with things I've already had. Let me put this aside and show you. What I had was... First off, this is some Murrow or very lightweight poster board. That will come later. But I had this cardboard. Uh, big sheets from when I ordered in some paper from Blick. And I thought, well, I'm going to use that up. Now the cardboard that I have, as you can also see here, um, is from the book package and also uh, Amazon package that I got. It's the type of regular cardboard where it, it has the narrow channels that go lengthwise to the board this way. Now there is other cardboard that's known as structural cardboard and the cells go instead of this way with a top sheet. They actually go perpendicular to the top sheet. That means they'll come up and meet meet the top sheet this way and that's very rigid and if you can get your hands onto it and get it and then you can just put light post board covering and you're about ready to go after you seal it that's not the option here so what I did was I thought for a little bit and I went well I can do something with this I played around with it before so I cut this sheet this is off an Amazon box and the channels are running this way. Okay, great. Now this was uh, some scrap from board. After I made my other boards, I had made two bigger boards than the one I showed you, and that one. And so I cut some more sheets. And the big thing is, I'm going to glue them together. Now the channel, you want the channels not all to run the same way. Like this would run the same way if I put these together. By having this, which runs the opposite direction, that's great. So I can have one this way, one in the opposite way, and then, you know, technically, since I had this, I could do it this way, but it would be even stronger if I had it running, all three of them running in different directions. So that's what we're going to do. First of all, let me show you besides the cardboard and the railroad board or lightweight poster board I do have spray adhesive I'm not going to use that right now I only use that when I attach the white poster board I do have a sealant many people will use a gel mat sealer I had this left over from another project it's a gel uh, polyurethane so I just used it it worked out fine some of the thinner polyurethane could possibly bubble your board because of the wetness. But since that's gel, there was less of that. Then I have my plastic bone folder out. 
my cutting knife, uh, something I can spread the glue with, as well as a brayer, and of course the cheap glue. Now, you, you, you're looking at this and say, well, I'm going to make one board, and I would have to buy all this. Hey, by the time you do that, yeah, uh, you might as well get the gator board, if that's what you want to do. However, you're going to make several boards. Uh, if even if you had to go out and buy the glue, the spray glue, and the uh, urethane, you could make a lot of boards with that. So, but I had all the the spray glue on hand. I had to get that because I'd run out. All right, let's get started. I sped this segment up four times normal speed because I don't think you need to watch me in real time gluing. I decided uh, which two pieces I was going to glue first then marked it so I know where to place the glue. I'm applying the Elmer School Glue which is very economical. I don't have a problem using it. I spread it out using a cardstock spreader that I made out of scrap uh, folding several layers together and then I'll be placing the sheet of cardboard where the channels run in opposite direction of the piece of board that I had applied the glue. Next, I'm using a bone folder to press down and make sure all the glue has good contact. Also, then using a brayer to uh, reinforce that. And there you saw I had to apply just a little bit more glue to one corner. And what I have here is the other side. I am decided how to lay it out so all the channels run in opposite directions. Then I mark it so I know where the glue needs to go. And I'm, again, applying the uh, economical Elmer School glue, and I'll be spreading that out to as an even layer as possible. Again, using the same cardstock spreader that I made by holding some scraps several times. Applying just a little bit more to an area where it was a little thin. I believe we're just about ready to put the, the final sheet on. And now I'm placing it according to how I laid out and marked it earlier. And then rolling it, and I'll be placing this under a weight for overnight. Okay, I'm back. This has been eight hours. And I'm going to put it back under the weight after I cut it. And uh, then we'll glue on the uh, white. But I just brought it here so you can see me cut it. I'm just going to use a regular knife. Like this. And... go many times through the different layers. Now, if I was making a much larger board, uh, there'd be three to four, it'd be more like four layers, and it'd be a great big full size 22 by um, 30 would be uh, probably five to six. But a half sheet which would be 11 by 15, would be at least four layers. So, I'm just doing a rough cut right now. And, getting it ready to then, once it's cut to size, I'll take it outside and use my spray adhesive. I really suggest this. I've always had trouble with, especially when I'm using the lighter railroad board or a poster board, of waviness unless I use the spray adhesive. And then I would spray this on one side, spray this on one side, and marry them together. And then put them back under weight for another 10 to 12 hours. Make sure everything is perfectly cured 
and ready to go. And I'll show you that after I get done gluing everything together because I'm going to take that outside. Now it's been eight hours overnight that I've had this under pressure. I did spray glue the cardboard side and then spray glued the cardstock railroad board. Well, it's called railroad board. board. It's too fly. And since there is limited space here, I didn't want to get off center because once you put it down with both sides spray glued, there's no repositioning it. So I use a little trick where I uh, folded up this one side. It's a little bit less than a half inch uh, width diameter. And then when I laid it down, I was very careful to lay it down so I'd have edges around. And that way I wouldn't be totally mispositioned and off center. So that's what I've done here. I do like gluing the edges down. Some people will put both boards flush and, and then possibly you could use some like duct tape or whatever. Or you could just uh, then glue in a strip of paper all the way around. I've done that before. I like this method a little bit better of folding it up and having one side with the edges folded down and the other side flush. So that's what I'm going to do now is trim and then we'll glue up the sides. Here I'm measuring uh, the flaps I'm going to be folding up to be just slightly less than a half inch and marking them. And then I will be cutting them using my metal straight edge as well as a knife. Now I changed the knife blades. I want to make sure they're nice and sharp. I run through it several times even though this is a type of cardstock railroad board. Uh, because if I press too hard, I have a tendency to move, and then that wouldn't be good. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here, marking everything up, getting it ready to glue up the sides. And cutting them. And uh, now we're doing that. And after I do that, then I'm cutting out the excess on the corners to make it easier to fold. And I'll be doing this final flap as well. I'll be using the Elmer's glue to glue up the flaps. And you'll see how I bend it first one way and then the other and it makes a smoother bend. At least that's what I found. The Elmer's glue with the moisture uh, can help hold the flaps in place while it's gluing. But really you need to either clamp them in place or uh, tape them in place. There you see we're from the prior flap that was used to help positioning the board when I put it down. A uh, little bit was in need additional glue but instead of using spray glue I used Elmer glue. There is where you saw me doing the forward fold and then the backward fold and then I'll be bringing down the edges. And uh, then I apply more glue uh, because I've, because of the channels did draw some of the glue away, I'm taping them down. You could possibly put down the flaps and then uh, have pieces of board on along the side and clamp them together. I don't have clamps. So I use the tape method of holding down the edges. After I get this all taped up, I will be putting the board back under pressure just as precaution. Um, it probably don't need to but I just wanted to make sure everything stays flat. It, there's no reason why it shouldn't stay flat after all the gluing. So what I'm going to be doing here is finishing up the gluing of the various sides. You can watch it here. And uh, then after everything is glued and I put it back all under pressure again um, overnight because I did it in the evening and it was just easier to do it that way. I will then take the other piece of railroad cardstock that's going to go on the opposite sides of the one I'm currently gluing the edges down to and spray glue both the card, exposed cardboard side as well as the railroad board and sandwich them together like I did before. And then I'll trim them and uh, put them under pressure. I should say put them under pressure, then trim it, and I'll be back. I'm just about finished here gluing and taping and uh, I'll leave you to watch the rest of this and then I'll be right back.
I'm back. Uh, as you see, I got the can of polyurethane. It's not gel. It's next to a triple thick. And my brush and an old uh, ruler that I clear with. And let me get the board in question. It's thoroughly dried on both sides. So now we can seal it. And let's get to it. Now, I sped this up four times normal speed because I didn't think you'd want to watch me opening up your urethane can, which is the extra thick, not quite gel, but very thick. It is water-based, and I do mix it using my old uh, ruler, which you see there, and I do have a, a chip brush, which is a little bit stiffer. It's not super soft. Then I'm going to be coating this side of the board that we just made. Normally what I do is I put two to three coats in between the coats. I do a light hand sanding and then I get it's fully sealed in very nicely. This particular urethane will be dry to the touch and then you can handle it after three hours. Uh, which makes it very easy for me to coat one side, let it dry, and then after three hours, I can cut the, uh, coat the other side with no problem, including the edges. And that's what you're seeing me here, doing here on this one side. Now, I'm not going to show you this entire process of me just painting on urethane and sanding it. I think you already know how to do that, so I'm not going to bore you with that. So I'm just finishing up here right now, getting ready to let it dry, and then I'll do the opposite side. Do a light sanding, put on another coat, and then another coat after that. And then I'll be back. Wanted to show you quickly uh, the board after I stretched a piece of watercolor paper. Normally I don't stretch this small of a piece, except I'm going to be experimenting with some extremely wet watercolor techniques for the background. Plus, it does show that definitely you can use regular office staples in stretching and fixing it to the board with no problem. And it does a great job. So, let me know if you have any other suggestions or improvements on making watercolor boards using your scraps that you have around. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. You have a wonderful day.